Hello and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> it's so nice to see you here. I am filming this on the actual 31st of December, so it's about to be New Year's. We're going to my mom's tonight. We're gonna have so much to eat. We're gonna have so much fun. And I wanted to bring my reading stats to you and kind of react to my reading stats. If you don't know already, I use Storygraph instead of Goodreads, um, just because I try to not support Amazon as much as I can. Obviously, I still use Amazon in certain instances, but where I can, I try not to, and that's why I have the story graph. And also, the story graph is a little more modern, and it has way more statistics on like your reading and what you're reading and so forth. And so we're going to look through my story graph statistics for 2021 today, and I'm really excited, so let's just get right into it. We have my reading stats right here <laughs> and we can see that I met my reading goal for 2021. Actually, this is the first time I've ever had this high of a goal. I usually average around 30 books a year. That's kind of what I usually read. But this year I was really trying to keep up with booktube and really trying to make an effort to read more. And so I said, hey, I'm going to do 54 books. So one book a week, basically. And we can see that I actually met that goal at 63 books, so 170. 17%, so I'm really excited I actually hit that goal and actually even exceeded it. I'm still reading one book right now, but I'm not going to finish it until tomorrow. <laughs> Let's have a look at everything. And so what I really like about the story graph is that you have these little pie charts here, which is very exciting. So we can see which moods I read the most. So what I read the most was reflective, emotional, dark, <laughs> okay, um, challenging, I guess, yeah, mysterious, tense, informative okay so that's kind of where we're going what's back here sad inspiring hopeful funny lighthearted okay so actually i would have reflective and emotional are probably the two best descriptions of books that i like <laughs> so that's actually very accurate i'd say my boyfriend is always asking me why i'm reading such sad stories but you know what now i can say to him i only read seven sad books this year and pace wise i enjoy medium paced books not so much fast paced books, some slow paced books, but medium books the most. And page number, we're at a good middle of 300 to 499 pages. I average about that. That's actually true. I think most of the books I read are above 300 pages. Um, and some are less than 300 and only very few were 500 plus. Let's check out which ones were 500 plus. Ah, uh, yeah. This I actually listened to as an audiobook, so that makes sense. This I did read. The Shadow of the Wind was very long. A Promised Land was very long. Yes, that's true. And Stamp from the beginning. Okay, yeah. But one of these I did listen to as an audiobook. So the 13 and a half lives of Kip Blaubeer. Those are... Yeah, I read that as an audiobook. And fiction, non-fiction... <laughs> well, <laughs> we can kind of see that my focus this year was definitely fiction, entertainment. Let's put it that way. <laughs> That's pretty accurate though. I mean, I do kind of like to read nonfiction. However, um, when I'm studying, I really don't want to. I really don't want to read any nonfiction when I'm studying. So yeah, towards the end of the year, I really read way more fiction. So contemporary was the highest, literary second, historical. Wow, I really went for those historical things. But actually I've just, I feel like I've just gotten into the historical ride this year. I don't think I've really read many historical books before. Oh my God, I love The Nightingale. Yeah, interesting, okay. So what else do we have? Thriller, that's kind of new. This is the first year I've really read thrillers. And I've also decided that I'm going to listen to thrillers from now on. I'm not going to use them as, yeah, I'm going to try and not read them as physical books, but listen to them. LGBTQIA. Interesting, eight books? What did I read? Eight books. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, really? Interesting. I can't even remember. <laughs> All right, romance, mystery, memoir, fantasy. This year I've also really started liking memoir. memoir. What, what did I read the least of? Classics. <laughs> yeah. Um, short stories, speculative fiction, biography. Yeah, not so much my thing. Horror, tried it, didn't like it. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's about a good... Mm -hmm. 
that's kind of what I feel like. Format print, yep. Yeah. Um, this I didn't do until the end of the year. I didn't really see that I could change this to audio, digital, and print. So we kind of have to ignore this chart and next year I will try and do everything accurately. Most read authors, always only two books, Walter Mörs, yes. Great children's book author, I love his books. And I actually listened to some of his books while I was on vacation in Albania. And that's why we have two books here. Kristen Hanna, yes, I definitely found her this year. Um, I didn't know, I mean, I knew of the author beforehand, like I knew of Kristen Hanna, but I hadn't read anything by her yet. And so, yeah, that was me reading something by her. Sally Rooney, although I'm still on the fence whether I like Sally Rooney's writing or not. I don't know how you guys feel, but like, I really hate every single character that she's made. I really don't like any of the people that she's written. But on the other hand, I feel like it's pretty amazing to write so many characters that I like all hate. I mean, that's pretty impressive too, right? So I'm still on the fence on whether I like her or not. Taylor Jenkins Reid, yes, I found her this year. I especially love The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. That was just a brilliant book, brilliant. So. I read Malibu Rising and I have a few others of her in mind. Britt Bennett also, I found her at the beginning of this year with The Vanishing Half and that was just, a, 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 I, I can't even put it into words, but it was such a magnificent book, really truly. And Lucy Foley, I found her audiobooks were very entertaining. Ah, yes, so this is interesting. So the blue is books read and the the red as pages read. I think in March I read um, The Promised Land by Barack Obama, so I have tons of pages in here that month. But we can really see when I kind of started studying again for my degree. So at the beginning of the year I was, I mean, 10 books, that's ridiculous. 11 books, 10 books, that's crazy. In June and July I didn't have that much time to read and in August I was on vacation, so I was just listening to some audiobooks. And then in September, October, I kind of got back onto my horse and I feel like five books is a good, a good average for me. I think I could, f I could read like five books, continue reading five books a month because I've started to listen to some more books now that I've started studying more during the day. I really don't feel like reading that much in my free time, but I feel like, yeah, I could read, I could read, I could do five books a month. November, I had a real dip. I had a real, um, like end of the year reading rut, <laughs> which you can see here. But then in December, I had some more time to read. Um, so that was fun. And my average rating was 3.68 stars, which I feel is pretty, I mean, it shows that I'm kind of critical, right? I mean, I don't dole out my five and four stars as much as I should. <laughs> okay, I give a lot of three stars because there are a lot of books out there where I feel like they're entertaining enough, the storytelling is good, but they, it just did not like blow me away. <laughs> and I feel like five star has to like completely blow me away and just make me sob and just all the 100% emotional want to reread completely involved, will never forget these characters and, it's felt, and it feels like they die when the book is at the end, when the book is over because they've left my life. That's kind of my five star. <laughs> And then four star, it's like just below that. So a story that I really enjoyed, that I loved making, uh, that I loved reading, that I enjoyed really, really much, but where I'm just like, that little extra mm, is just missing from the story. Yeah, I will go into my five star books in my favorite books of 2021 video, which I'm not sure is uploaded now yet, <laughs> but it will be coming um, to talk about my favorite books of the year. And so that would be kind of interesting. So that was kind of fun going through my reading stats. My goal for next year is probably going to be just the same. So 54 books, even though I exceeded the goal this year for the sole reason that, um, next year I'm going to be doing my master thesis. So I'm going to be working in lab. And when I'm working in lab, that means that I work there like full time every single day. So I know that I'm going to just be reading a lot less than I did last year. So if I meet 54 books, that's still pretty good. And then maybe the year after that, we can try 60, 70, something like that. So I'm gonna stick with 54 actually, because I know with full-time working and thesis and all of that, that's going to be a pretty high goal for me personally. I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments what you want to set as a goal. I don't know if next year I want to um, set up a pages goal. You can actually do that here in StoryGraph, but 
I just don't feel like I have a certain amount of pages that I want to hit because I, as we can see, I don't really pick tons of small books. I mean, 31%, less than 300, that's actually pretty good, I would say. So most of the books that I pick are pretty long already. So I don't really feel like I have to, I should be reading more pages or something. <laughs> I don't necessarily feel like I need to do that. But yeah, I feel like my rating is good. Like I, I feel very happy with 3.68. That means that I'm being critical, but that I'm not being overly critical. And I really hate to give out like two or two and a half stars. I rarely do that because I will DNF a book before I give it a bad re rating usually. Yeah, I really don't have many bad star ratings in there. Obviously my DNF books are not on this list, so usually if I really don't like a book, I'll just DNF it. <laughs> so let me know what your reading goal is going to be in the next year. If you have a reading goal, if you're just saying, hey, I just wanna read and see what happens. But yeah, I love this story graph idea of looking at your stats, being able to see what you did, because then, yeah, I don't have to do it myself. <laughs> so I hope you're having a great start to your new year, and we will see each other soon. Bye.